Hello? I guess it's my time to shine. So here there was this challenge going around saying, can you draw an entire piece using only one hard round brush or just the basic brush, right? Every program, Photoshop, Procreate, Clip Studio, they've all got the basic round brush. In Photoshop, it's called the hard round brush and I use the hard round pressure opacity brush. It's, it's, there's only like a couple of basic round brushes, right? There's the soft ones and there's the hard ones. I prefer the hard round pressure opacity brush because you know it just says the harder you press, the more opaque it is. So if you press very lightly, it's a very light brush, very, very transparent. So that's what I use. Now what's funny is I've been doing these tutorials, right? I've been making these videos and guides and commentary videos and all this stuff about how to draw fire, ice, metal, you, you name it, smoke, various effects, almost all of them use just the hard round pressure opacity brush. And I do that on purpose, you see, because everybody has that brush. You don't have to say, oh, wow, Gamma, what brush are you using? You know, people still ask me, but almost all of my tutorials, almost every single one of them have always focused on using just the hard round pressure opacity brush, specifically because it's, it's the easiest to access. And I show you how you can make these things and these effects, ice, fire, etc., with this basic brush. It's a powerful brush. And I've been <laughs> I've been on the hard round brush kick. And I've been I've been screaming from the rafters, if that's actually a term, I'm not sure if it is, about how good this brush is and how people tend to sleep on this brush. Because yeah, if you look back at like some of my other time lapses, you'll see like grungy stuff, and those those have texture brushes, and I've made texture brushes and stuff to, to have that kind of gritty, grungy effect, right? But like, when it comes down to it, the whole point of this entire challenge is specifically to, sh to show people, you know, you don't need special brushes. And some of the more more clunky, less intuitive brushes, you could say like the hard round brushes, you know, you can make anything you want with them. They say, you know, an artist is only as good as the tools they use. And that's, that's, that's nice, <laughs> right? That's saying, you know, yeah, you should get some quality stuff. And people often, you know, equate brushes with that, but it's not quite right. You see, what's funny about like art, especially, right? You can make anything with anything. So on to this piece real quick, just just so I can, I can rattle off about the hard round brush all I want. But about this piece, you saw me start the sketch. I had the thumbnail phase. I was zoomed out and I was just kind of sketching the thing, what I wanted. And what I want with this, by the way, is I wanted a figure and I wanted some wolves. I'm a big fan of, you know, like horror and, and stuff like that. But I'm also a big fan of just really dynamic shots, a lot of mood, you know, a lot of movement if I can. And this one was, was a little more basic on that terms, but I was really proud of how it turned out. Anyway, so the, the way you actually work with this brush is it's kind of like sculpting. I have a tutorial on how to blend with this brush in particular, the hard round pressure opacity brush, the basic hard round. And it goes over all the, all the ways you can blend colors and shades with this brush. Now I wanted this one to be spooky, right? And wolves can be kind of spooky if you do them right, but like, you know me, I like to have a little little bit of fun, right? So naturally, naturally, the uh, four-eyed wolf seems to be a thing. And I wasn't sure how I wanted this character to look. Maybe I wanted them to look young, old. You know, you'll see me playing around with facial features and like wrinkles and maybe age them up or change them a bit. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. I ended up going with a uh, relatively young, kind of chiseled, but still kind of, a little bit of a little bit of wrinkles, a lot of detail, but it'll get to that. Now I'm gonna color this piece with gradient maps, and again I used the only brush I used for this entire piece was just a hard round pressure opacity, and including the shading here, I made it another layer, and I added the darkness and I and I added some some highlights. Essentially, I just drew in some very gentle black and then I erased it. But later I'll actually add like white. I think I'm actually adding white right now. But with gradient maps, and I have a tutorial on gradient maps also. 
I use like two gradient maps, a red one and a more orange one. And uh, I map them and, and all they do is they, they say, okay, anything that's this value, dark or light, gets turned into this color. And it's really useful. It's a great starting point. I'm not saying you should just end your coloring with gradient maps. You can if you've got a really good uh, setup. You know, the values are, are is where exactly where you want them. The details is everything you like. And the coloring is all you got left. You can totally end it with the gradient maps. But I would like, typically, to suggest that you do the gradient maps about midway through, get the values right, get everything you need in order, the details, the, not details, but you know, basic details, where the heads are, where the wolves are, everything's facing the right way, you know. And then add the gradient maps just to get the color right. Then you can start blending with the color. See, at this point, I actually start blending. Now, blending, the term for that, means I pick the colors that are on the screen and paint with those colors. So you'll see me with an eyedropper tool from time to time when I'm zipping around here in this time lapse. Uh, but I just literally, I grab like the navy blue in the hair or the red and I just grab that color or shade and I paint with that and I push it from one side into the other. So if I got like a, a little bit of navy blue on the edges of the dark sides, I'm gonna push it into the red a bit to make sort of a, a purple. But that's essentially how you blend. Again, so I have a tutorial on that. So if you're curious how I did that, you can check it out if you'd like. But the biggest issue with this piece I knew had to be values. Details, great. And one thing I love about this brush more than anything else is the amount of detail control you have with this is astounding. Some people really don't like this brush specifically because it is the hard round pressure or the hard round brush. Meaning that when you draw with it, there's gonna be lines. You know, there's there's no there's no fuzziness. There's, it's not soft. It's not not almost like not a, like an airbrush or you know it's it's hard to render skin or very smooth things uh, with a with a hard brush typically. And you'll see even with the skin of this character, he's got lines going through him, right? Going when the when the colors transition from like the light part of the cheek to the darker part. Yeah, there's lines, but I ah, man, I, I honestly love that. You have to keep it too like hard cut or, or cell shaded even, but you know, you could do a bit of blending and I do, and you'll see me blend a lot more, but the detail work you have, the, the detail control you have with this brush is incredible. It's incredible. You could do anything. All you have to do with this brush, the secret to this brush is just change the size and control the pressure. And you could do anything you want with this. So when I saw that this challenge was, you know, quote, a challenge, right? I was like, oh man, <laughs> this, this was made for me. This was made for me. Because I've made these tutorials. And I in those tutorials, if I'm drawing fire, for example, I'll draw the fire and that's it. You know, and I hopefully I help people. Uh, but I think... I was really waiting for something like this because now I get to show all of you what this brush is capable in a typical illustrator kind of sense as a as a painting tool meant to make a piece not just how to do techniques and of course like you could use whatever brush you'd like with this brush in particular I like the lines because it makes great hair it makes great smoke it makes great fur which kind of goes hand in hand with hair but it also, like, I love how it makes this skin look. And you'll see me, like, zoom in a little bit more and do extra skin stuff with this. But with with blending with this brush, it's a lot easier than most people give it credit for. So I'm seeing these challenges pop up and, like, people making YouTube videos and, and Instagram posts and Twitter posts and all this stuff. And all these artists are like, oh, man, I, I had no idea, you know. Some were like, oh, this is... So cool. I, I, I didn't know I could make stuff this cool with this basic brush. You know, it was, it was really hard to control. It was, it was hard to do the shading right that I wanted, you know, you know, whatever, right? And then the other side, you had artists going, oh man, I had no idea that this brush was just so, <laughs> so awesome. Like you sleep on it, right? Like this is not the, the brush that you think of immediately whenever you think of like a really cool piece. And hopefully I made this piece really, like I honestly like love this piece. 
This is one of my favorite pieces I have made recently. Not not necessarily just because like it turned out really well, which is you know definitely a bonus, but a lot of my work, if you look at some of my more, some of my more recent time lapses, it's it's all in that kind of grungy style, you know. It's all dark and and broody and and charcoal y. It's all it's all grungy. It's all dirty almost. And that's because I use mostly just texture brushes on those. I use a little bit of everything, but mostly texture brushes. But in this style, uh, it was like coming home. I haven't drawn in this style in a while. And if I'm being real with y'all, I would love to just keep drawing in this style. A lot of people love my, my more gritty, grungy style of, of artwork, which is fair. You know, I'm really proud of it. I can do some really great stuff with that. Uh, it really just kind of clicks with me because I've always loved like horror artwork and, and it's easy to do horror artwork with a kind of grungy style. But with this, it's just, it, there's a movement, there's a mood, and it's, it's stylized and it's, it's nice. You know, it's nice. It's cool. It's like almost like League of Legends or World of Warcraft kind of stuff. I love those. That, that, I love that style. I love those games. So to get this soft detail, like this soft lighting, that kind of glow that I used for value control, as in behind the character and in front of the character, between the character and the front wolf, uh, I just had red, and it was just very gentle strokes. And because the entire piece is just a bunch of these hard lines everywhere, you really don't notice them, you know? You just gotta get your brush really, really big and just gently, whoosh, you know, just up there. You can even drop the opacity uh, of the brush or the flow. You know, you have a lot of control and you can make this brush do incredible things. So when it comes down to like getting the details of, of this wolf's face or, or the character's face, anything's possible. Anything is possible with this brush. Don't ever be afraid of the hard round brush. You know, I know, I know a lot of people, a lot of people are in my comments all the time. A lot of people are in other artists' comments all the time. And the, like the number one question, number two is like, hey, your commission's open. Number one question though is, man, what brush do you use? And I like, again, I think that was the, the, the birth of this challenge. Just to show people you can do anything you want to do with any brush. I'm pretty sure there's other challenges that involve like more stylized stuff with just with just texture brushes, but I mean, if that challenge comes up, if that challenge becomes a thing, I yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely hop on that one because like apparently I've already done that a lot. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, time lapse, this piece. And if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to ask them in the comments down below. I try to answer every question I can. And uh, if I don't see the question, just, I don't know, just repeat the question. <laughs> I'm, I'm really busy all the time, so I'm sorry. If you like this video, please feel free to like it. If you'd like to see more videos and time lapses and tutorials, please feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other work. Again, I have a bunch of tutorials explaining how to do all kinds of techniques and I use basic brushes to try and explain them you know brushes that everybody has access to just so you don't feel like you need some special tool in order to do something how to make smoke lightning metal anything and I'm making tutorials constantly so again feel free to check out my stuff and hopefully you find something that helps thank you so much for watching hope you enjoy this piece and I'll see you in the next video bye bye